Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day and Gamers, and welcome. So today I wanted to test out a number of different Warhead sort of configurations. Some things that we've seen before, as well as just having a look at the damage, and the idea of can explosives also propel a sort of object, such as a rock. So I've came up with a few different sort of designs, and I'm having a little bit of a mess around with them, a little bit of an experimentation, and combined in some of them to see what we can get. I'm also using the modification allowing us to use large ship blocks on small ship blocks so I can create some interesting sort of housings for these warhead blocks themselves. But apart from that, let's get started by having a look at some of the basic sort of theories of repelling an object with explosives. So a crucial part of this weapon is going to be propelling the rocks further into the target by using the explosives. Now, we need to actually test if the explosives are going to propel the rock at all, or they're simply going to destroy it, or even in the worst case, it'll just sit there and do nothing. So I've set up this little test area. We're going to fire at that, and we're going to see if that rock actually moves towards us. So let's have a look. And it does look like the rock just exploded, rather than actually moving in a different direction. So that's not a very good start. So to better test this, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a large explosive device placed at this interval here and I'm going to slowly keep placing the actual stone one block away until we find the optimum sort of propel sort of range and then we'll be able to transfer that back into our warhead that's sitting over there nicely. So I'm going to start placing and I'll start to figure out which is the optimal angle. So what I've discovered is the rock tends to travel at the same speed whatever distance it's actually propelled by the actual explosive and it's a very slow speed, probably not that effective. But now we've got to think about this combined with the actual speed of the warhead. So if the warhead is going at a maximum speed and it's combined with that projectile, it is going to move the rock forward. That's the important part, giving it that little extra boost into the target, even though it's probably not even going over two meters a second and we've slowly lost point, well, 1% of the sort of rock, you could even say. But it's quite interesting to actually have a look at this and find out such a result. Let's try to implement that into the wire design. So what you're seeing here is the core design. This is the first Mark I variant of the sort of barrel bomb design, I'm gonna call it. Now, the idea is that we have a central large explosive surrounded by a small ship shell, and you can see that's attached with the rotor glitch right there. Now we're here at the front, we have a gravity generator. And the idea is we're gonna pull in rocks, fragmentation, all them little bits that you'd have in like a sand grenade and pull them into the actual target themselves or pull them in towards the warhead. So then when the warhead impacts, the shell is going to explode and all that will be remaining is these fragments flying forward into the target and hopefully deeply penetrating into it. But we're just gonna to have to see how it goes. Now, the target I've actually set up for a lot of these experiments is three layers thick, and we're just going to have a go with the base warhead without any extra rocks added in or any of them essentials. So this is the base warhead, no thrusters, no nothing else special added to it, and we're just going to throw it at the target. We're going to reach probably about 30 meters a second, and then we're just going to release it, and then we'll try some different configurations and see exactly how it goes. So 30, there it goes into the target and as you can see we get three layers of armor penetration and three layers is what I consider to be most sort of ships and that'll break you at least into the interior side so that's the standard warhead and as you can see the small ship blocks like this fragment into these little shotgun shaped rounds doing even more damage to the actual target and that's without even adding any sort of actual explosives or well we've added explosives but we've not actually added any rocks to the configuration and what i've noticed actually does this is we can actually see that we've got these little triangles here trapped between the ramp parts and the ramp parts are obviously from that modification for the large ships to small ship modification and it just adds such a difference and more damage to the actual warhead design and you can see just the tie over there beautiful blast radius where the explosive alone does a very similar sort of blast radius but you don't see as much damage around the edge of the target as you can see here it's got more crinkles more little parts and also you've got these lovely little fragment I love fragmentation parts very nice anyway let's continue on testing 
So now we've actually seen the penetration power of the warhead, let's actually have a quick look of what the rock can actually do by itself. So we'll speed it up, then we'll delete it, and there goes the rock towards the target. And you can see the rock's got a lot more of a tighter sort of pattern, but we've got very good sort of penetration values from just the rock alone. I mean, think about how cheap that sort of ammunition is. It's 10 minutes worth of mining, and you throw a rock at someone, and you've got a big hole like this. It's, almost, it's pretty much one of the best weapons you can actually have, just throwing a stone at someone. And from the look of it, it looks like it's penetrated one, two, three, four, five layers of armor in this case. And the more speed that we actually add towards the rock, the more penetration it'll do in damage-wise. So it's quite an interesting sort of result we got. Maybe combining that in a warhead sort of design, we could get a very similar, more effective result with a bigger blast radius. But we'll have to see. So you've seen the results of both the warhead and the rock now. You've seen that the rock can penetrate four layers of armor, but doesn't have too much of a big explosion. And the warhead penetrates four layers of armor as well, but gives it a much bigger blast radius and causes much more damage. Now, technically, if we combine them both together, we should get a very interesting result. So let's actually launch this thing and see what we get. We might get something, we might get nothing, but this is what testing is all about. So we're launching the warhead ahead and it's going towards the target. What have we got here? Got a big explosion. Rock has bounced back and it's perfect that it's penetrated the side. We can work out exactly how many layers it's gone through. So it's still only penetrated four, four and a half layers of armor. And we've also got a bit of shrapnel lying around and the explosion is pretty deep. I think we need to do a little bit of further testing. We need to work out where the sweet spot is for that rock and how we can get it deeper into the target. Is it simply adding more speed to it? Or are we going to have to do something completely different, maybe a bigger rock or a smaller rock for a different sort of penetration level? So we fired this sort of strange configuration of a weapon, testing out some of the different areas at some different targets now. But I think it's time that we actually fired them at a ship. Now this ship has a full interior, and we're going to launch it at it and just see what sort of damage we can actually do or penetration we can get to the interior. And I've added a little bit of heavy armor to the design because heavy armor is on some ships, but the cost of it causes it not to be in all areas. So let's actually hit the launch key and follow this rocket in. So a T on that one. Off it goes. Straight into the side, somewhere near the heavy armor. Oh, and it's bounced off. Now that is an interesting result. It hit the heavy armor and bounced off. We're going to have to have a look if heavy armor causes the rock to actually physically bounce off like that. That's, that was really, really strange, really different. Let's continue on having an experiment around. So I've just quickly set it up again, and I'm just going to launch it and see if we get the same result of the actual warhead bouncing off the target. Let's actually have a look. No, so that first shot must have been some sort of fluke in the design. Anyway, let's have a look at the penetration we got. So we got the shrapnel of the small blocks actually coming off, peeling away. We've penetrated the outer hull and we broke into the center. We've actually broken into the cargo bay here and we've got the generator room below quite intact. So it would require another shot. But a few of these missiles at any sort of large ship, due to the price and the cost of them, simply one warhead and a couple of thrusters completely obliterates that sort of amount of time. You can see how the heavy armor hasn't taken too much damage at all. And we'll launch one more directly at the heavy armor just to show you how strong and resilient it is. But it should be for the amount of plates it costs to actually put into it. Now if we launched another one into this, we'd probably get a lot more damage done to the interior. But a few of them spaced around, fired around a ship, could just completely destroy it within minutes. Saying that though, the rockets do a lot smaller damage, but you can fire them a lot faster. So it's something you'd have to take in consideration. So I've done a little bit more refinement on the design and I've come up with this little configuration here. Now this seems to be the best sort of armored penetration warhead that I've discovered to actually get a warhead with inside the ship. Now when it comes to just penetrating pure armor alone it seems to be pretty useless. It penetrates a few layers but when it comes to actually penetrating a real sort of ship layout that's when it comes into its own. So let's launch this up and I'll show you the sort of results we're going to get. So the first layer is going to explode, second layer explodes and we have deep penetration into the target even through heavy armor so we've managed to break through the heavy armor and you can see how the shrapnel shrapnel and some other parts have actually got within the side of the ship you can see how this here let's actually uncover what's stuck 
with inside the ship. I think this is some of the damage. So this over time with ship movement and stuff will cause even more problems. You can see how the block's got himself trapped in there. You've got blocks rattling around inside here and could cause some serious damage. But the main brunt that was held, held in that explosive was when it hit the heavy armor. It really stopped it, but you can see how it's got that tight little compact penetration of the heavy armor into the hull of the ship took down two more layers of light armor and then ended up in the hull so if this is actually penetrating light armor purely we're going to get a very easy sort of penetration i'll actually show you that now if you so as the ship drifts away i'm going to fire another one of these rounds at the bottom of the hull just to see what sort of damage we're going to get there so we've got quite an accurate round first explosion second explosion and we've penetrated quite a few layers of the underhull armor as you can see and the rocket is jammed with inside now the theory would go the more layers of sort of charge that we do the more sort of penetration we can get on the explosive so we'll actually have to put that to the test all right so we got a little bit of a double whammy sort of torpedo coming up here let's launch this while we can so we got two times the explosive at the front and we got load at the back shrapnel is absolutely going everywhere you can see it's stuck within the hull causing all sorts of problems for that ship look at that inner explosion due to the angle though it seemed like it resisted quite a lot of the damage but it was hitting heavy armor so you've got to take that into consideration but the way it gets stuck within the armor lays is what's going to really cause the damage over time I'd like to thank you guys for watching and hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of the experimentation with some of these different sorts of armoured penetrating designs and I was just messing around to see if we could come up or get a feeling for what the actual penetration sort of values are at the moment with different sorts of explosives. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.